Oh my, what's this? It seems like Microsoft has now added an integrated forms directly into the desktop version of Excel. That means if you need to collect information, create surveys, get feedback, etc., you can now make your own form without having to jump into the web version. So how about we look at how to create a form in Excel, add some questions, play around with some designs, check out some of the form settings, share our form, and look at some of the responses and how they show up in real time. The good news is forms are very intuitive and easy to create. So we're going to be moving at a moderate pace because there is no need for deep thought with this topic. To start, make sure you're on a new Excel file, then click insert, forms, new form. Now you may get prompted about needing to turn on the autosave because everything is ultimately stored in your OneDrive account. So if need be, go into the upper left-hand corner, click the toggle icon to enable the autosave, click the account you want to use, and go ahead and give your file a name. Okay, the next step is to click on Insert Form, New Form. Then just give Excel a few moments and this new screen will appear. This is your form and from this point out, all you need to do is add your content. Starting up here at the top, if you hover over the name, you can click on it to rename the form to something else or even add an image. If you click on the image icon, you'll see you can search for an image on the web, upload one from your OneDrive, or even use an image off your computer. In this case, I'll add an image off this computer. And how about we go with this goofy logo? Next, let's add our questions by expanding this quick start section. And now we can see our options. Let's start with a choice question. So we'll click this button and you'll notice things are very straightforward as we mentioned. So how about we type out our question along with our responses. From here, we can allow for multiple answers or make the question required by using this toggle right here. Moving on, how about we add a new question and this time go with the text option. This text option allows the person to type in the response to the question you're asking. You can even select this long option, which will let them get long-winded if they want to. Next up, let's add our ratings question, which as you can probably guess, allows the person to respond via a score or a scaled evaluation. So if we type out our question, you can set the number of levels you want along with a symbol you wish to use. For now, let's just keep the defaults. Moving on, let's add a date question. This is good for when you might want to know when the person was hired, became a customer, or maybe their birthday. For today, how about we go with something like this? Next up, let's add a new question and this time go with the ranking. This one is pretty interesting because it lets the person choose or prioritize items they feel are most important. It may seem a bit confusing, yet when you see it in action, you'll understand when we fill out the form here in a little while. For now, let's go with something like this. And let's speed things up a bit just to save us some time. Okay, next up is the Likert question. The way a Likert question works is you give the person a range of answers that will measure their opinions, attitudes, or behaviors. And odds are you've probably seen this before because they often have such options as agree, neutral, disagree, etc. So let's go ahead and add this one. And once again, we'll speed everything up just to save us some time. And the last one we'll look at is the net promoter score which measures how likely a person is to recommend the service, product, company, etc. And how about we go with this question? And you can see the scale from here. You also have the options to change the text at both ends of the scale to your preference. For today, let's have some fun and go with this. Speaking of fun, let's add one more question. And while we're at it, how about we do one more? The reason is I'll make this form available online if you want to check it out, or better yet, feel free to respond to it. All right, so that will do it for building our form. So let's move on and preview it. We can do that by going up here into the upper right section, click on the preview button, and now we can see what the form looks like, both on the computer and on mobile. Pretty cool. So let's go back over here on the left and click back. Moving on, let's talk about how to change the design. If we click on this palette icon, we can change the layout of the form right here, or down here, we can apply a picture background, show a video clip, and yes, even play background music, which, well, all right, might be a little much, but whatever. Moving on, if we click on the settings icon, in here, you can add such things as a start date and end date, which will make the survey available or unavailable. Setting a time duration will limit how long the person has to complete the form. If you check the shuffle questions box, your questions will appear in random order to the respondents. You can also get an email notification when someone submits a survey if you choose. Down here, you can create a custom note if you wish, which is always nice. And even let the respondents save and edit their responses. So that wraps up building the form. 
The next step is to send it out. And we can do that by going up here and clicking on the collect responses button. In here, you can send the form out in various methods. For example, you can email the form to specific people, create a custom QR code to send out, copy the code and put it into a web page, or send the form out to various social media sites. For today, how about we go up and click on the copy link option. Now in real life, at this point, you just send out the form. For now, please allow me to take a moment, be a little self-serving and fill out some responses just so you can see the form in action. Okay, here we are on the live form. And as you can see, it's very straightforward. So I'm going to fill out some responses. And the only thing to really pay attention to is this rank question. You see, the way it works is by using these up and down arrows. As a finer note, in real life, I might put a note in the question itself, letting people know they can reorder the choices by hovering and using the arrows. That way you'll minimize any guesswork or confusion. Once filling out the form is complete, let's go ahead and click on submit. Next up, to see what people are saying, you can click on the responses button, which will bring you to the screen with some cool graphs, which is a very nice way to get a feel for how people are responding. Some items to note include this more details option, which shows you the data behind the responses, along with going over here on the right and clicking where it reads individual results. You can navigate through them by using the arrows up here at the top. Once we're done that, we can go over here on the left and click the back button. Moving on, if we go up here and click on the three dots, you can print the form, share a summary link, or even delete all the responses. Now, getting back to where we started, which is Excel, as the responses come in, they will be added to this table practically in real time. So that's really cool. Over time, as the amount of responses increase, it leads to some interesting choices. For example, you could build a pivot table from the survey results, even creating your own custom graphs. Or if the data is messy, put the table into Power Query to clean things up, then build your pivot table. All right, and that'll pretty much do it. So before you go, if you're a fan of Power Pivot and want to learn about how it can be used to replace XLOOKUPs, check out this video.